Chapter 2, Section 2. This is about the hierarchy of life and emergent properties. Let's begin life's hierarchy with a good definition of matter. Most of you probably already know what it is. It's anything that has mass and occupies space. What that means is no two particles of matter can occupy the same space at the same time. What you're looking at here are atoms. You can see the nucleus surrounded by the electrons. So what exactly are atoms and a nucleus made of and what are these electrons? It turns out that atoms are made up of subatomic particles and there are three that are important for us, protons, neutrons, and electrons. The nucleus of an atom is made of protons and neutrons and then the electrons are much, much lighter. They're almost a thousand times lighter and they're found outside the nucleus in what we call orbitals or electron shells. Now protons have a positive charge, neutrons have a neutral charge, and electrons have a negative charge. The three subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons, come together to form atoms. Now there are 92 different types of atoms that are naturally found in the universe. Each one of these elements has unique chemical properties. They're also considered basic building blocks of the universe because with the atoms, you cannot break them down through any type of chemical reactions. Now here's where we begin to see emergent properties. There are 92 different types of elements. Each one is different from the other one, but yet they are only made up of three subatomic particles, those protons, neutrons, and electrons. So these elements have unique properties compared to their building blocks. Elements combine to form molecules. There are potentially millions of molecules in the universe. We have no idea how many there could be. I've got four different types right here on your right. The one with those long chains on them, that's a triglyceride. In the top right, that's a nucleotide or a nitrogenous base, actually. Then a sugar, then an amino acid, which is the building blocks of proteins. These are very large proteins. And each one of these proteins has a unique structure and they have different properties. And their properties are different than the elements in them. Most of our organic molecules have carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and hydrogen in them. And yet these molecules have very different properties than each of those four elements. So as you can see, we're getting novel properties that are beginning to emerge each time we go up in complexity. One of the biggest leaps in emergent properties and in complexity is the cell. And the cell is very important because that is where the processes of life all emerge. Molecules are not living. Atoms are not living, but a cell is. And these are Elodea cells that you can see, and you can see little green balls in them. Those are chloroplasts. And those are tiny little organelles where photosynthesis takes place. So, cells are unique. They're the process where life emerges. A multicellular organism. This is my pet. This is a purple reef lobster, and his name is Rock Lobster, of course. He's a multicellular organism. He's made up of billions of cells. You and I were made up of trillions of cells, specifically eukaryotic cells. We are greater than the sum of our individual cells. We have unique properties that are different than those cells, so we start to see more and more emergent properties arising here. Now, if you take all the individuals of the same species living in a certain area, we have a population. You can have a population of students on UNM campus, a population of people in Albuquerque, the population of New Mexico, or we could talk about the population of snow geese at the Bosque del Apache. If you haven't been down there, it's a great place to go see winter birds. A community is made up of all the different species living in the same area. So believe it or not, the Rio Grande River does have fish in it. And these are carp suckers and a red shiner and a fathead minnow. And these are all found in the Rio Grande River and they form the fish community. We could also talk about the community of bacteria living in your mouth. We could also talk about the alpine forest and the top of the sandias. Every living organism must interact with its environment. An ecosystem 
is a biological community that interacts with a non-living component of it. So we're talking about the soil, the water, the air, the climate. These are the non-living components. So ecosystems are how do the living components interact with the non-living component and how do they interact with each other? And yes, life does affect the abiotic environment and the abiotic environment also in turn affects the life. They're inseparable. This is a, a, a coastal estuary in North Florida. You can see the estuary in the background and you can see the pine trees in the front representing a transition between two different types of communities at the coast. There are lots of ecosystems, but some ecosystems have similar properties. We live in a desert. We live at the northern edge of the Chihuahua Desert. If you've ever been to the Sonora Desert, you've seen the large cacti down there. Deserts are hot and dry. They don't get a lot of rain, so everything there is adapted to dry conditions. Well, there are multiple deserts in the world. There's the Chihuahua, the Mojave, the Sonora, all in North America. Go over to Africa, you have the Sahara Desert. Go to Australia, you have the Great Simpson Desert. They're different ecosystems because they have different species in them, but they're the same type of biome because they function similarly. We could also talk about tropical rainforests of South America or the Congo. They're very, very different forests in terms of the fact they have different species, but they all have lots of rainfall, lots of sunlight, and lots of diversity. Here's just one type of biome. This is just showing a desert biome. You can see the Sonora Desert. You can see at its largest level, we have the entire biosphere. So the earth encompasses all the different biomes. Everything that's living on it is found in our biosphere. Emergent properties. You are greater than the sum of your parts. We see these novel properties that emerge with each level of complexity. So we start with an atom. We have 92 elements. Those elements are determined by the number of protons in them. And the elements have different properties than those subatomic particles. We have the level of the cell, which is made up of millions of different molecules. It has emergent properties that are different from those individual molecules. And we have, of course, a rocket from Guardians of the Galaxy as a multicellular organism, and he is different from the cells. One last thing about emergent properties. You cannot always predict the emergent properties. So when you put a whole bunch of cells together in a multicellular organism, you may not be able to predict the features of that organism. For example, just because I understand how a proton, a neutron, and an electron work does not mean I can predict how you are going to perform on your next test. So based on emergent properties, figure out the answer here. It would be C.